just closing up shop here. All right, I think we're in business. All right. All right. The last session ever, probably. Uh, of this. Who ever. knows if we'll do the rest of this series. Maybe eventually. Hopefully. Well, maybe. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I, I've definitely had fun with this. Um, yeah, me too. And I think folks have been having fun uh, tuning in as well. Come on, I don't want to see that. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Just trying to get the peoples up. Kinda messed with how stuff shows up uh, in. Uh... Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Now I know we don't got a ton of puzzles left. But I think we should start with bonuses first. Okay. Because we do have a little bit of extra ground uh, to go with this. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, Missing a couple of these here. Most of them you unlock at the end. But I think... The decorator's house, you have to, um, you have to get the inn all organized correctly. And then one of them you get for beating the game. And I think the other one you get for doing all the puzzles. Fair enough. SG warns, uh, once you get back to the main game, if I remember correctly, you'll very quickly reach a point where the game warns you you're about to cross a point of no return. Uh, by that point, you'll be able to finish getting the inn together. Might hypothetically have to go back to town and get furniture by solving puzzles. Uh, so make sure to do that before progressing. Good to know. Hello. And hi. Alright, but Art Lover's house will be uh, next. Kind of get the feeling that we shouldn't be doing these yet. But, whatever. No reason not to. We'll just run right down the list. Go on, give it a go. Wait, Pretty sure they're just puzzles. Wait, are we Matthew? Perimeter perplexer. Oh, wait, no, that's not. All you know about the plot of land below is what's written here, but even these few measurements offer you enough information to accurately calculate the plot's perimeter. In feet, what is the length of the perimeter? Be careful when considering your answer. The diagram may not be proportionally accurate. See? What? Hey there, what? Yogg. Phoenix Puzzleman. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, no, clearly this ain't, uh proportionally accurate because we got friggin five feet and five feet and that ain't the same length but we accept these things as mathematical conveniences now let's see well we know that um it's five feet on both sides because on the left side on the right side yes so yeah, that handles that easily. Mm hmm So, largely it's just a question of figuring out, um, this height... No, wait. Yeah. Uh, largely it's just a question of figuring out... Hmm. No, you don't need to know that one. Actually, let, yeah, let me think about that. 
you need to know um the the little one on the opposite side of that five feet on top you so need to know that one this guy yeah the bottom line of that you need to know that mm -hmm. and you need to know the bottom of the whole thing right boomer gamers wordle <laughs> That's an interesting way to think about it. I would think uh, Brain Age would be at least a little closer to that lofty title, but I'd accept that. <laughs> Boomer is a weird, weird concept to apply to a DS game. <laughs> um. Oh, if I were a smart... Uh, if I were a better red uh, gamer, I'd be able to make some sort of DS pun. Um. Bah. Not boomer, boomer gamer. Well, even so, boomer gamer. Yeah. I I think, I think like Atari or NES. Yeah. But, of course, it is easy for me to forget this game is 15 years old now, so eh, a bit older for some folks. I guess, but... Brain Age is honest, also the honestly, uh, Fair enough. Honestly, are any games not considered boomer games besides Fortnite and Minecraft at this point? Uh, Among Us. Yeah, and Among Us. I am so not hip enough to what's uh, to what's in vogue. I guess Elden Ring? I think that's still a boom boomer game because it's appealing to the older generation. Like the boomer Dark Souls. <laughs> Isn't the boomer Dark Souls Demon Souls? Everything. My point is, is that everything <laughs> except for like five games are boomer games. I guess. <laughs> what if we're <laughs> boomer gamers? Oh, no. Well, obviously, Boom Gardener is a boomer gamer. There you go. It's in the name. Do you guys know that Wii is as old as the NES was in Christmas of 09? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that uh, recently. <laughs> Anything after Pong was trash. You know, shout outs to the Magnavox Odyssey. And what's your opinion on Space War? <laughs> Some hot tennis for two action. <laughs> or um Crosses and Knots. Yeah, or uh uh, electronic <laughs> amusement device or whatever it's called. The, uh, cathode, uh, the cathode. Cathode ray tube amusement device. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we even going with this? All right, all right. Um, at some point, I was okay, trying so to figure how, out the how, perimeter how, of this. Yeah, how do, how do we figure out those two lines? Okay. Um... <laughs> I remember when they first invented space. I always hated it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I gotta figure out some way to get the chat to show up on stream. The poor YouTube <laughs> viewers are missing out on so much. <laughs> uh, just remember, those of you viewing on YouTube in the future, uh, the times for the video uh, for when we live stream are posted in the description. Be sure to tune in for... That's just more incentive for, us, for you to join us live. Exactly. <laughs> um... 
Okay, so we know that uh, we know that three feet is whatever that blank length is plus that shorter length, but that doesn't help us much. <laughs> well, we know that this line has to be somewhere between uh, one and two feet, I think. Not necessarily. Couldn't it be 2.5? I'm assuming that uh, we're working with purely integers here. Though that's fair. It's not That's specified. not a fair... Yeah, that's not a fair assumption. That's true. Um... I keep wanting to fall back on trigonometry and do some sort of uh, nifty trick to calculate this business, but I know that ain't gonna pan out. Or I know that's that's thinking overthinking it. Maybe it has something to do with the right angles. The right angles can maybe give you some clue. Well, with right angles, that means that we're exclusively working with uh, rectangles. Um, yeah. You could theoretically try to uh, split this into separate rectangles, so like put a line here, a line here, and then go off of that. Um, alternatively, line there, line there, which gives us something or another. No, that that works better if you're solving for area, but we're not looking for area, just perimeter. Hmm. Huh. talk in voice chat because I have an idea but I have no clue how to word it in text hmm. it's well so like this bottom length here that's got to be less than eight feet long right um yeah It has to be less than eight and more than five. Mm-hmm. But we don't know exactly where. Thinking seven? Seven would make sense because, again, that... Um, but, do, but does it make seven because you're guessing that, or does it make seven because you have a re does it make s does it seem seven because you have a reason for that? Because and they specifically say that the answer might not be proportionally accurate. Right. Yeah, it's... Uh, it would either have to be seven or six. Uh, again, I'm assuming that it's integers, not specifically given. I'm also assuming that um, I was trying to figure something out with this bottom length there, where like, yeah, but we're just again going in circles here. They might do decimals. I I wouldn't doubt them. 
This is meant to be one of the harder puzzles. Well, it doesn't look like uh, you would. Uh... Can you put? Can you put one in? Nah. Okay, so that. I guess that helps a little. Yeah, check-ins for you, anywho. Um. Okay, so. We're basic. So basically, this bottom can be six or seven, and this line, uh, this middle bottom, oh boy, uh, would either be a one or a two, I think. Yeah, it would have to be because it's less than three. Yes. So that gives us an effective range of, um. That gives us an effective range of 1 plus 6 is 7, to 2 plus uh, 7 is 9. Uh, a room of error, a range of error between 7 and 9, um, in addition to 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5 is... Oh, oh yeah, wait. Th Outsider 18. Life says even if you have 0.54 times, you still end with no decimals. That's true. Also true. Yeah, we can't. We can't ignore that entirely because, um, well, yeah, we can't ignore that entirely because if they both have, if both of the ones we don't know have 0.5, then they would add up to, um, a zero. Okay, so let's, let's play with that then. Uh, so... So, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5. That's our full range. I'm going to have to start writing this down. I did not prepare paint ahead of time. Bear with me. Uh, da, 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 da. Things that people can't see. Well, we know that we have a full square. If that helps. Like the five foot by five foot. We know that that's a square. Ooh. So we can like make an imaginary line to the right. And then the bottom thing. Right. An imaginary bottom is five. I don't know how much that helps, but. Here, hold up a sec. I'm switching over to view uh, paint. And let me switch this so you can see it too. Uh, da, 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 if I were painting in a dot net, there we go. Okay, so scratch this out here. Uh, so no matter no matter how things shake out, we always we always have eighteen to work with. Eighteen feet plus whatever uh, we don't know. Uh, eighteen I get from this, this, this. And then the total of this adding up to five feet. Yep. Or five T. Yeah. Meh. So it's mostly just a question of what X and Y are there. Uh. Now if we, uh. Is that big. So theoretically we're working with a range of 0.5 through 2.5 for X and um, what would that be? 5.5 to 7.5. It does seem to me that whatever um, that in all instances, there's going to be some, uh, uh, uh... Don't just tell us the answer unless we ask for help outside our life. Let's see, so... Theoretically, we're working with a range of 6 through 
10, which creates a, a potential variation of 4. So, so then this would be 24 through 28. That's going to be our range of numbers. Cripes, it looks atrocious. The unfortunate part of doing scratch work in front of uh, live studio audience is that everyone gets to see how atrocious my handwriting is. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, now, we could just brute force it by uh, inputting values between uh, 24 and uh, 28 integers, but um, there's probably got to be a smoother way to to resolve that. Well, I don't think that brute forcing would work, because... Well, there's five values we can choose from. Right, but... I... Oh, you just mean, like, putting in the number and then checking if it's right? Yeah. Yeah, but we would lose out on pick routes if we did that. Well, yeah, no, that's not ideal. So, what am I missing? So, I think maybe work with that square idea, I thought. I don't know if that helps. Alright. I'm, sh I'm sure it's, like, based off of this square you can figure other things out or something so like if we divvy it up like that let's make this a garish red um i mean the square itself perimeter would just be 20. um mm -hmm. i know we're not supposed to take the picture literally i don't know that's this guy really fits into there so that we can do stuff with that um what am i saying Five plus y equals z. Three equals x plus y. We can rearrange these a little bit so that y equals three minus x, y equals z minus five. Three minus x equals z minus five. Which means that, uh, which means z equals, uh, 8 minus x. Cripes, it's an atrocious 8. But, oh, no, wait, you're supposed to erase. Darn friggin'. Bear with me. I think you're getting too math boggled down. It, it's some trick... That's like from. I think we need to do more logic and less math. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I 
so fundamentally the issue is that um, we don't have a lot to we can't figure out what that little bit of extra is like if we knew how much longer the bottom rectangle was compared to the top rectangle then we could solve this whole thing but Wait, we don't you mean this guy versus this guy yeah Yeah. Uh. I think we should do a hint. Yeah, okay. And get rid of all of these maths. <laughs> Don't be hating on math, man. I'm telling you, though. It's not math class. I'm telling you, just don't be surprised if it goes, now, you actually might have to use some math here, folks. It All wouldn't right. do algebra. Alright. First, don't be thrown off by the shape of the plot's right side. The total length of the right side is 5 feet. Duh. Focus your attention on that 3-foot measurement. It plays a pivotal role in helping you solve the puzzle. Well, we sort of knew that. Oh, sorry, outsider life. Um, what did that one say again? Oh. Uh, so, to the length of the right side is five feet. Uh, focus your attention on that three foot measurement. It's totes important. Okay. I kind of feel like is what we were doing before. Um. Yeah, you can give a hint. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, what you got, Outsider Life? all the lines you already know the value of to only show the ones you still need to figure out. Huh. Well, I, I thought about doing that. Well, let's, let's give that a go. So. Yeah. I need to be disagreeable. So we're not too worried about that. Well, don't color that in. You shouldn't color that in. What? Why not? We know that it's, it doesn't matter because what these individual ones are. They add up to we five don't, feet. No, that, that's not necessarily true. Because if... Like, for example... If we knew what the... Um, what the line to three feet was... And we also knew... What the bottom was, we could like make a square out of that or something. Well, but you're starting to get mathy on this. But, for the sake of things. Well, that's not mathy, that's just logic. A square is the same on every side. Alright, so... Cripes of the Joshua's work with me. Da -da 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 
da 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 Okay. And then, and then, like, draw a line far to the right of these that we know. And then we also know, um, we know that f five feet of the bottom is, we know part of that line is five feet. Jeez Louise. Yeah, okay. And so basically we could scribble out like what this much yeah i don't think we can do anything else unless there's something i don't understand which there probably is oh well, Eduardo, it is always lovely to see you in chat. We don't get to see you a whole lot these days, but it is uh, always uh, it's always nice seeing you hang out. Uh, I still think about your awesome um, uh, your awesome nomination for that, uh, or your awesome entry for the uh, punch out contest uh, a couple years back now. And thank you for the follow. But all right, so. Oh, come on, what am I missing? I'm sure it's gonna be something like, oh, these are the same length, isn't that wacky? Or, oh, these are, it's, oh. The, these two add up to three. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, they do. Okay. So okay, it's... so that's interesting. Okay, so that's going to be five 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 three three. Essentially, yes. So that would be twenty one. Oh, oh yeah, I guess we don't. Yeah, we don't need to know what they are individually because we know one is five, and then, um. Those those together are three. Okay, I see. All right, let's give that a go then. Twenty-one. Just making sure I did my math right. Five 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 is fifteen. Three is eighteen. Three is twenty-one. And yes. Okay. Let's see what we got. Well, here's my guess. Nope. All right, I did something wrong there. Oh, I, yeah, I think sure you did I wrong had. math or something. Also, if you notice that every chord of the plot is a right angle, this is a key. I think you missed a five. Yeah, I probably did. Okay, so five and five and five and fifteen. Oh, duh, because the bottom is going to be five yeah. plus. Yeah. Shrapnel that adds up to three. Yeah. Okay, so that would be five 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 three three. Twenty twenty six. 26. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking I was thinking too, uh, that twenty one doesn't fall within that range that I meticulously calculated earlier. Uh, I, I like, didn't think okay. that seemed I didn't think that seemed right, which is why you sh I thought we should go back, but I didn't say anything. You just, oh, you just wanted to see, uh, see Luke's heartbreak. <laughs> I think I've got it. All right, there we go. Hey, good hint, outsider life. Appreciated that. Excellent! If you draw a line like the dotted yellow one shown above, you can see that the right side is 5 feet. Therefore, red lines X, Y, and Z must add up to the length of 5 feet. Next, you have two horizontal segments to deal with, A and B. Since A plus B equals 3 feet, and you have two sets of A and B, you have a total of 6 feet. Uh, add up everything, and you have a perimeter of 26 feet. Question. 
Quite right, my boy. Nicely done. Alright. Looks like th these next two are going to be mathy as well, so let's give her a go. Just because they have numbers in the titles doesn't necessarily mean they're mathy. Do give this puzzle a try. Hey, don't hate being a nerd. I was in math club back in uh, middle school. I know the vibe. Uh, number lock. The door in front of you has an odd lock mounted on the front. The only way to unlock the strange contraption is to place small tiles labeled from 1 to 9 in its slots. The lock will open when the numbers on the lock equal the same number when multiplied vertically and horizontally. There are 9 tiles, but the lock only has 7 slots, so you won't need 2 tiles. Can you open the lock? Okay, so... What was that you were saying about not necessarily being mathy, Gooms? I didn't say it wasn't mathy either. Just making sure. Alright, so... Uh, all three ways of looking at it are going to multiply up to the same amount. Okay. We're going to have the same product from the sounds of it. See you, Yag. Oh, alrighty. Thanks for joining us uh, for at least a little bit, Yag. Uh, the latent games, I've only played this one and Diabolical Box. They're both good. Um, don't be expecting... Oh, and I played Leighton X Ace Attorney. But yeah, the plot gets a little ridiculous in all of them, but uh, they tend to have good puzzles, so they're worth playing for that. Yeah. I, we... would ca I would call the series good, but not great. When we uh, dive back into the main plot, we're... Or the main story. We're actually towards the end of it, so you'll be getting the tail end of a bunch of wild uh, plot twists that we'll go mm -hmm. over uh, in a sec once I've gotten through all of these definitely mathy problems. Mm -hmm. But it's got good characters and it's got good puzzles, so it's worth playing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, we sort of ran into this before with another one, didn't we? No, no, that was diagonals, uh, and the key with that was that the, the central number had to be the same. Game is 15 years old, I'm okay. Fair enough! Well, I think we should probably try to use lesser numbers, because... The bigger the number is, the weirder amounts we'll end up with, probably. True. Nice attorney fan, holy shit, the cases can be shit. In the later games, more, uh... Like, um... Ace Attorney is 1 through 3, I think, are all pretty rock-solid, um... There's a couple a couple that are a little out there, but they at least have fairly self-contained logic. Uh I don't know about two slash three, but <laughs> Yeah, that was that was the exception I was thinking of. <laughs> I'm telling you yeah. though, two three is just <laughs> You're not going setting. to defend turnabout victim. There <laughs> you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. No argument here. <laughs> hmm. So if I do that, that's 27, and that's no good because that... Yeah, don't is... do 9. 9 sucks. <laughs> Harsh. What did 9 ever do to you, man? I, I think we should go for, like, 6. Can we get six somehow? Uh, we could get six one way, but we wouldn't be able to get it too many other ways. Um, yeah, how, how about 12? Can we get 12? I think 24 is the number we want to get. Because this is 24, okay. and this is 24. And we can make another arrangement of 24... Uh, like uh, this. Uh. So if we do that... 
And, yep, nope, wait. Hmm. Not quite. Could do that. No. What about 18? Can we get 18 somehow? Eight. Nine times nine times two times one. Six times three times one. And then two times No. That would be two times three times three, which you can't do. Right. I'm thinking it's gonna have to be something with six because six is a super easy, a super uh, easy number to play with and, and stuff like this. Um, twenty. Well, yeah, but that, that's why I'm working with multiples of six, like tw eighteen and twenty-four and twelve. And twelve is too small. Uh, eighteen is close. Maybe 30? Uh, does 30 have enough, uh, factors? I don't think so. Um, 30 you can only get... Well, you could do 2 times 5 times 3. Right, and then 5 times 6 times 1. Okay, that's a thought. And then, uh... Two times five times three. No, you can't do that. There's no way to get. Well, switch switch the six and the one. Now is there a way to do it? No, because five is a prime number. Okay. Uh, another way to divvy that out. Okay. Uh, next product. Uh, next. Uh, next multiple of six is forty-eight. Wait, no. 36. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. 36 works uh, could be it because that uses 9. So you could do that. Um, 36 is... That would work. And then... Hmm. Running through my head real quick of uh, of factors of thirty six. Uh, factors of thirty six. Uh, one, two, three, four, six, nine, eighteen. Ah, no, that would make forty. If you put five in the middle, that would be forty, and that's too much. Too much, yeah. Um, huh. Do that. I need another three, that's no good. I do that. Three and what? Three and what makes 36? Three and 12 makes 36. And 12 I can't get to like that. Six and six make thirty-six. I also can't get to it like that. That's why I have to do that. Maybe it is forty-eight. Um, no, wait. Thirty-six add six is forty-two. <laughs> forty-two m might work because that one uses seven. Seven is a weird one. Right. So we could banish seven to like there. No one would have to know. Could do that, and then... Uh, uh, 42 is... That's too much. That would be 48 across. 
You're right. And if you did three, that would be 36 across. Yeah. Actually, you basically would have to do it like that. So that would then... 42 is... You can't get there with four. You could get there with two and... What? More than 20. Yeah, so that's no bueno. 21. Then is it 48? 48 would be 6 and 8. I think we're on the wrong track. This is getting too big. Uh, kind of try, try, try 24 again. Okay, 24. 8 and 3. Um, 6 and 4. Then if you could get to three that away, and then that, two, three, so. no, because you need another four there. And 24 is not divisible by any of these numbers. Um, can you move the eight so that it's on the side somehow? Like in the corner? could do that but then again this requires another uh, that requires another three uh, I do wait, think well what wait, wait okay so switch the three and the one and then uh, Then can we like? Nah, that wouldn't no, work. I I do think we need to figure out uh, the value that is the. Um, oh, there's a term for it in mathematics: the lowest common product or something like that. Uh, that uses uh, seven of these values. Um, so like. Yeah, but that'd be complicated because we're multiplying three things instead of two things. Regardless, you would still be able to divide uh, whatever that product is by each individual number. I guess so, yeah. So, returning these for a sec just for the sake of mathing this out. Da, 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 da. Okay, so 1 through 9, obviously no good. 10 uh, products are 1, 2, and 5. 11, prime number. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Uh, that's 5. 13, prime number. 14, 1, 2, 7. Uh, 15, 1, 3, 5. Uh, 16, 1, 2, 4, 8. Uh, 17 prime number, 18, 1, 2, 3, 9, 6, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, that's 5, getting there, 19 prime number, 20, 1, 2, 4, 5, no one cares, uh, 21, 1, 3, 7, yes, uh, 22, 1, 2, 11, uh, 23, prime number, 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. It's our first one with 6. We need one with 7. Uh, or 7 values. Um, 25, 1, 5, no one cares. Uh, 26, uh, 1, 2, it's 13 twice, so no one cares. Uh, 27, 1, 3, 9. Yeah. Uh, 28, 1, 2... That's kind of brute forcing, but that's the way things go. 1, 2, f 4, seven. 7. Yeah. 
29. I'm pretty sure that's a prime number. I get muddy uh -huh. on primes at that point. Uh, 30, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Yeah. 31, I think, is prime. 32, 1, 2, 4, 8. Yeah. 33 is boring. 34 is, uh... The... 17. Yeah. 35 is 1, 5, 7. Yeah. 36, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8... Not eight. No, not eight. Uh, but yes, nine. But again, that's just six of these values. Uh, skipping ahead, 40 is going to be one, two, four, five, eight. 42, one, two, three, f not four, six, seven. Not nine. Meh. Uh, 44, meh. 1, 2, 4, 11. Uh, 46. 23, so no. Uh, 48. 1, 2, 3. 4. 4. Uh, 6. 8. And 9's not in that. You'd have to keep going. Ooh, okay. Um... 50, not gonna have enough guys to go with. Um, 51. 51 is... 51 divided by 3 gets you 27, so that's not gonna be uh, too useful. 52 is... Um, 26. Which is 13, so that's no. Um... I'm thinking it's going to be 56. 56 would be 1, 2, 3, 4. No, it wouldn't be 3. Yeah, it's not 3. No, so maybe it's 60 then. Because 60 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Yes. Is it 8? Is it 8? No, it's not 8. No, it's not 8. Darn it. Uh... Because 64 is 8. Is yeah. it 64? Uh, no, because that's, uh, pro that's a power of 2. So that would be 1, 2, 4, 8. Uh. Powers of 2 are only divisible by 2? And more powers and of 2. And 4 and 8 yeah. and... Huh. Pretty sure. I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure. I'm blanking on the proof that you do for that, but yeah, I think a power of a number is only divisible by powers of that number. Huh. Um, 64, 72 maybe? Yes, I think it's 72 because that gives you 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 9. Yes. Okay. Okay, we got there. So. so yeah, 72. Nine. Because seven, 7 plus 2 is 9, so. That means that 9 is possible. Now that's not right. Um. Yes, that would be it. Because 1 times 9 times 8 is 72. Uh, 9 times 2 times 4 is 9 times 8, 72. And then 6 times 4 times 3 is 6 times 12, which is 72. Oh, yeah. Yep, you got it right. Whew, got there. Sorry about that, folks. How does this sound? I think we hammered a couple subscribe our viewers. Legends Apprentice saves the day! Whew. That's right! As long as all three of your combinations equal to 72, you've got the right answer. The diagram above shows one of many possible com configurations. The only tiles you can't use in your answer are 5 and 7. 
I knew you could do it. Oh yeah, little Matthew icon does kind of look like uh, uh, Udgy in the back there. This puzzle requires your attention, my boy. Oof. Four balls. Is this going to be like the gorilla one? Oh, no. Okay. No, it's one of these. Move each ball to the area with the same color. Alright, I'm assuming that these are uh, on opposite ends of where they're supposed to be. So this guy goes yes. there. That Okay. Hmm. Yeah, uh... It's it's a green in the top, and then yellow, red, blue in that order. Wowie. I'm guessing that's not the play. Um, So that's one, R right? That's, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then I think if we just make that the play of just getting one at a time, then it's easy yeah. enough to work out. So then from here, we can bring you back into the game. Yeah. Uh, -oh. uh, move that yellow one up. That one there. And now move the yellow block. Oh. The big, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you can get that blue in that little spot. Yeah. Yep. Nope. Uh, you can move the blue top block, and then you can move the yellow block over. Oh yeah. Okay. And if I do that, I can swoons that guy in there. That's not too bad. Alright, so then it's just getting those two home. Move the yellow one into the red spot for now. Okay. Alright, focus on one at a time. No. Go back a little bit. So back here? Yeah. Now move that red one out of the way. Okay. Yeah. Bring this back down. Yeah, now move that blue one all the way. Now you can move the green one down on the right. Or or do that. Yeah, that works too. So bring that there. I don't think I can go anywhere from okay. there. So maybe bringing down green is the right call. So there. Wait, that's not green. Yeah, yellow. That's right. Okay. I don't know that I... Oh, I could move you there. Do that. And then... Hey, there oh, we yeah. go. Okay, you're pretty close. Yeah. Okay, so then it's just a matter of... A... Nope. Wait. Aha! There we go. Yeah, that one wasn't too bad. Marvelous. <laughs> Professor, I've solved it. Excellent. This puzzle requires 28 moves to solve. Solving it shouldn't be all that difficult if you stay focused and avoid getting <laughs> confused. It's almost shockingly easy after the last two. I guess that's a cooldown one. Excellent work, my boy. Alright. 
Well, I think we've dilly-dallied long enough. Let's get back to the adventure. Our story so far. After a long search, Luke and Professor Layton finally gain access to the tower. Inside, they learn the truth behind the village of St. Mystere and Raymond's abduction, which we won't rehash at this juncture. Okay, uh... I don't think there's anything to it but to just keep climbing. The, the, this music is very golden eye. This this floor doesn't appear to have any puzzles set up for us. So if we climb this spiral staircase, maybe Luke, my boy, take out that guard over there. <laughs> we'll reach the top floor. I think you might be right, my boy. Come, let's hurry. Is is that our hint to to just wait? Wait a sec. Do we have to? Because I'm thinking, surely we don't have all of the. Uh... Surely we don't have everything. Uh... For um, the in puzzle, we might. Um, what about that? R that round table isn't being used by Luke at all. Maybe you have to um, settle for giving it for to Layton so that he can put his he said on it. Oh, but he already has a ra Oh, that's a lacquered stool. Okay. Okay, yeah, actually that, that helps a bit. <laughs> I must say, I find this round little table very charming. So... Well, he actually kind of respects the Ammonite. Um, can you move move the statue of the guy to Luke? I mean, Layton. Well, he's kind of getting freaked out by the Baron. Like I said earlier, I'm 90% sure the game will warn you, so I'd wait until you get there to worry about making sure it's done. I okay. Alright. Alright. I wasn't sure if that was the warning of, hey! This spirally staircase, it's pretty close to the top. So those two desks over there look pretty cluttered to me. We'll just, we'll adjust those uh, when we go back. Well, nothing to it. It's very explicit. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh! Oh. Our view was obscured from the ground, but who would have suspected a charming cottage like this here? Look, the lights are on, Professor. It would appear that someone is living here. We did it. We solved the... Wait. Oh, okay. We solved everything. Don't send him. Don't send him. Okay, we're good. Yeah, it'd be nice if the game uh, did uh, was very clear. Uh, this is the point of no return. Kind of doing it like uh, Kingdom Hearts always does it by making it very clear uh, when's when's enough. Well, even if we mess it up, we can just load the save, so. True enough. Oh, yeah, hey, here we go. Reach the top of the tower, continue into the house, return to the village to explore some more. Okay, we return will, of course, village. return to the village. 
Is there fast travel up to the top? No? Okay. Well, that's that's okay. So, considering the ones we solved, we had to have missed some puzzles somewhere. Looks like it. I mean, the ones we solved in the extra mode, or whatever. Yeah, because so those were uh, presented as... Um, those were presented as coming after the in puzzle was resolved. Da, da, da. Or maybe Lady Dahlia? Well, real quick, I'll just check to see if she's got any bottles. Nope. Oh, how much you want to bet it they're hidden puzzles where you have to click a specific candle or something. Could could very well be. Oh boy. Okay. Well we'll see. Nope. Well just check every village or just out of being thorough. Righto. If there were hidden puzzles, I'm pretty sure they would have been uh, uh, spirited away to uh, uh, the uh, puzzle shack. Oh, you mean when we've cleared chapter 9? Yes. Yeah. Uh, check around the sewers. I'm just gonna do a, a wide circuit first. Okay. I don't know, I keep hoping there's going to be something new with that. You should check your index to make absolutely sure you're not missing any. Um, we are definitely missing some because we confirmed last time uh, the numbers skip a little bit. Um, go, we s missed uh, 115, 118, and 120. Well, 120 could very well be just the very last puzzle of the campaign, but the other two definitely uh, we should have bumped into them. Is there anything higher? I mean, lesser. Yeah, 101. 101. Okay, and that's gonna be it, because I'm pretty sure we're, uh... Uh, if you crunch the numbers, we're, um... Down by four from the story total, so... Again, that is... 101, 115, 118, and 120. Probably not gonna say anything new. Got a guide up so worst comes to worst, uh, you can always cross reference that. Uh, just look up if there's any hidden puzzles. Yeah. That we're missing. Yeah, actually, if any of those are specifically hidden puzzles, uh, that'd be good to know. 
And I can give you those numbers again if you need them. Uh, 101, 120, 115, and 118. Okay. That specific window reminds me of a puzzle. <laughs> we have to check these things. Wait, looking at the... Oh look, Professor, I found a hidden puzzle! Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. that's kind of dumb. And it's 120! Huh, okay, so that's not just the last one. Get the ball out three. Can you get the red ball out of the maze? Slide the obstructing thingies. Who cares? You know how to do the thing. Uh, let's mosey. Oh, we've already messed up. It might be in the... Um, carnival. I don't remember there being too many hidden puzzles there. I think you might be right. Well, they are all hidden ones. Okay. Well, good to know. Uh, yeah, got it. Easy. I think I've got it. Professor, I've solved it. Excellent. In addition to having that bothersome yellow block in the way, those purple and blue blocks proved to be quite a pain, didn't they? It may have been frustrating really. to solve, but <laughs> don't you feel good now? What a relief. Piece of cake. Now let's go find more puzzles. Friggin' the manhole. The It's not even a manhole cover, it's just the open manhole was hi hiding a marble <laughs> puzzle. The the empty void reminds me of a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> the existential angst of nothingness reminds me of a puzzle. You know, I look at an open hole and you know what the first thing I think of? Marbles, 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 marbles. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I guess nothingness Hidden is puzzle. a puzzle in a sense. Like, we can't comprehend nothingness. I guess I can't argue with that. Odd box out. Of the four boxes below, three are the exact same box viewed from different angles. The fourth box is a slightly different design. Can you spot the odd box out? Okay. okay, so B, B and C could be the same. There's nothing preventing them from being the same. A B and, and C. A and B can oh. also be the same. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, wait. Can A and C be the same because they share one? Where's the top of this star? If it's there, then if that matches that, I guess it's okay. 
but it probably doesn't. That's probably supposed to match that, which means that... Actually, yeah, that's fine. Who cares? Yeah, so these are all the same, which means this guy's the nerd, uh, and we know that this is the nerd because... If that guy is an X, and that would imply that that has to... That Well... If... If, let's say that B and D are both true, then that would mean that... Um, that would mean that the square and triangle have to be on the left and the bottom on B. Right? Yes. Yeah, the diamond would be on the left and the square would be on the bottom. Right. And that doesn't make sense because... That would mean that the diamond would have to be opposite the heart, which is not the case in C. Well, also... Oh. Also, the sun would have to be opposite this, uh, the square, which is not the case in A. Yes. Yeah. So I'm pretty Correct. sure it is D. I think I've got it. Yeah. Good thinking! If you break down boxes A, B, and C, you can see that they all share the same arrangement. However, when you break down box D, you can see that its faces are arranged in a slightly different manner and might look something like the above diagram. However, you can't know for sure because the other three faces of box D are mysterious and unknown. Whew, that puzzle sure put up a fight! Okay, so... Two down, two um. to go. Probably those, um, at least one of those last. Two. Oh, in the rubble, of course. Oh, no, wait, this is chatter. We saw that before. So we're, at, we're missing 101 and. 118. 118. Trying to think, we did have a couple rooms that were kind of empty. Yeah. Probably at least one, if not both of those, are going to be in the tower. Okay, uh, if you can find out where 101 and 118 are for us, SG, that'd be helpful. Yeah, and you don't have to give us the specific map screen, but, uh, like, uh, the general area would be a solid starting point for us. Um, go, go into that one shop with the candle, see if there's one there. 101 and 118. Correct. This shop? Yeah. I, I just remember the ones would randomly show up in here sometimes. Usually there was something on the counter to prompt them. Yeah, that's true. Is it maybe the fact that this chandelier has mismatching bulbs? <laughs> nah. Um, 
One is somewhere in the north end of the village, the other is somewhere in the south end. Well, we're closer to the south end, so let's go ahead and look there. Are they indoors or outdoors? South one's indoors and the north one is outdoors. Okay. Okay, so... I just... I'll give the in another sweep. But I didn't see nothing here. Is it maybe uh, hidden between the sofa cushions? Is it on the light um, switch? How about the mansion somewhere? Is I don't know that the mansion is the south side. That's oh okay. Game would probably consider that the uh, uh, east side. I guess fair enough. Don't think it's gonna be in here. Those were your directions, not the game. Okay, fair. Fair enough. I will check the uh, manor. Which is to say, I'll check the exterior of the manor. Even though he said it was indoors. Well, maybe you just have to view it from outside. It's like on the... Yeah, okay. Uh, these we saw already. Oh, well, this specific tile reminds me of a puzzle. So, um... Rhythm Thief did something sort of like this, where uh, at a certain point you had to scour for uh, specific sound effects uh -huh. uh, in order to complete your collection. And some sound effect... It's, I'm not trying to remember how the game worked precisely. The idea was that you had to collect different sound effects in order to mix and match um, different... Uh, or create audio cues in response to different puzzles. And uh, uh -huh. some audio cues you needed, some audio cues were bonuses. Um, Rhythm Thief is generally a fine game, but there were a couple instances where I was just scouring for stuff, and um, that game's equivalent of uh, the hint coins. Uh, uh -huh. They had a different function, but you search for them in the same way. That just pouring through the different map screens and just click, 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 clicking everywhere just really kind of uh, wore down on me after a while. Uh-huh. Um, the kicker of it was the very last uh, sound clip that you can collect in the game. Um, you can't even collect it until the post-game, after the main story, uh, is, and there's no delicate way to put this, a fat man passing wind. <laughs> and that just kind of felt like the perfect summation of my experience of, um, of, uh, searching for crap in that game. Like, <gasps> reminds me of the golden poop in Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. Your reward for getting all the Korok seeds. That's at least sort of the joke that's being foreshadowed throughout it, I suppose. But, uh... Yeah. 
Eu... Huh. Blanking on what other rooms there are in the south side. Yeah, that's what you get. I, I don't care um, to... I don't care about spoiling it because people would have looked it up if they cared at this point or done it. <laughs> Did but yeah, you you get a useless pile of golden shit. That's your reward. To be fair, the other Korok seeds were implicitly poop. Um, just uh, uh, and the whole joke then is, well, you like collecting our shit so much. Uh, here's the biggest dump of them all. Yep. <laughs> At least collecting more hint coins. Can't have too many hint coins. Not anything in here? That's not indoors. Oh yeah, I guess not. I already checked indoors in the park. I would think this is no longer the south end of town, but just... Oh, wait. Inside. My dad's been slowly working through Breath of the Wild over the past few years, so if he manages to get um, uh, every Korok seed... Yep. Yeah, uh, don't spoil that for him. Don't spoil the surprise. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask this. Have I missed it in my search of the South End? Go south. You have missed it. Okay. <laughs> we'll do another sweep. Now, I suppose for the sake of things, uh, what is the building that we're looking for? Yeah, it's not really proving anything at this point. <laughs> Prodneys. Oh, that big, dumb, big-nosed nerd. It's is it his? Is it his ankle? Is that the secret? This dust bunny reminds me of a puzzle. <laughs> no, that's the door. This protoplasm reminds me of a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> spleen reminds me of a puzzle. <laughs> ah, hell. Uh, those pictures above the door? Boy, they really hide stuff in here. The... What am I even... Jeez, oh, how... What? Oh, okay. Red and black cards. A jokerless deck of 52 cards sits on the table. The cards are shuffled thoroughly and divided into two stacks of 26 cards labeled A and B. If you divide the cards uh, as described above and check the contents of each pile a thousand times, how many times could you expect the number of red cards in one pile to match the number of black cards in the other? So, uh, they're just divvied into 26 stacks of cards labeled A and B. Divide the cards as described above. Check the contents of each pile. How many, uh, times could you expect the number of red cards in one pile to match the number of black cards in the other? Uh, 
I mean... This probably isn't the obvious mathy solution of just figure... I, wasn't, I don't know why you can draw there. Um, it's probably not just the obvious mathy solution of figure out the probability that they match. Um, uh -huh. I'm trying to th think of a loophole um, that uh, that basically lets me go, yeah, it's every time. Um, like, maybe by the rules of it, you can divide it beforehand and then shuffle it once it is divided. Well, it says divide the cards as described above and check the contents of each pile 1,000 times. It doesn't say um, divide it 1,000 times, so I think that the checking it 1,000 times is a red herring. Oh... So, like, you're just compulsively checking the uh, half decks, like, has it yeah. changed? Has it changed? Has it changed? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's part of it, anyway. Okay, so... Uh, um, probably zero, just because it's not very likely. But I, I guess it could happen, but it says how many times could you expect. So... It's not very likely that they match, and um, it doesn't matter if you check it a thousand times, they probably still don't match. That's what I think it is. Hmm. None. Well, let's give that a go. Well, here's my guess. Nope. Then my guess is every time. Professor. Give it another shot. None of this cockamamie zero bullcrap. <laughs> All right, one zillion. How does this sound? Yeah. We rigged it the first time. You can expect a corresponding number of red and black cards to show up between the piles a thousand times out of a thousand times. There are 26 cards of each color in a 52 card deck. If you form two piles of 26 randomly selected cards from this deck, the number of red cards in pile A is equal to 26 cards minus the number of black cards in pile A. In pile B, the situation is reversed. No matter how the cards are divided, the number of red cards in pile A will be equal to the number of black cards in pile B, and vice versa. So for example, for stack A, let's say uh, spades and clubs equals 10 cards. Therefore, the total of hearts and diamonds is 26 minus 10 equals 16 cards. In which case, the total of clubs and diamonds, filthy lie, of spades and uh, clubs is clubs. Uh, 16 cards, so hearts and diamonds must be 10 cards. Okay, I misunderstood the question. I guess it was like how many spades are in this one and that has to match up. I mean, how many blacks are in this one and that has to match how many reds are in this one. Something like that. Yeah, I was thinking it would be uh, all, oh, um, what are the odds that, um, you'll have a full deck of blacks versus a full deck of reds, uh, full half deck. Uh, I, I knew it was some dumb, confusing wording thing like that. <laughs> oh, that was a real mind twister. All right, last one. Out of here. Go, 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 go. Gun it, gun it, gun it. This one's outside, so it's not in the tower. Man, 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 man. Uh, check the meat market. There's a lot of things to click on there. What is in this brick? Oh, yes! This crack in the brick <laughs> is the puzzle! <laughs> we seem to have stumbled on a hidden puzzle here, Professor. Luke, my boy, what are you doing up there? Getting the missing puzzle! Splitting it up. 
You have a big wooden cube that's painted red on all six sides. After splitting the cube into smaller parts as shown below, you're left with 27 cubes identical in size, but varying in the number of red sides per cube. How many of these 27 small cubes have just one of their six sides painted red? Six. Yes, because it's the ones in the middle. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. Oh. Too late. We're going live. This is our life now. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I just wanted to think if... Wait, are they going to not count the bottom one? Because he's standing up and he can't reach the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Presumably it's just hovering in midair. That's right. If you di can dissect the block in your head the way as shown above, the answer is easy enough to come by. As you can see, the number of small cubes with one side painted red is six, one for each face of the larger block. Piece of cake. Now let's go find more puzzles. Oh wait, we solved all of them! Smashing work! Oh. Okay, so now we definitely can solve the end thing. Ah, oh, man. And we didn't get any more. The in puzzle was within us all along. Okay. Um, so I guess we have to move the dresser out of the way of... Out. Yeah. Here, you get the bottle. No, you don't get the bottle. Wait, but you really like the bottle. Oh, man. Uh... It's something on top like a fossil? Yes, actually. Okay, uh, can I guess move the, the teddy bear? Yeah, and then the statue, the dude. Yeah, that guy. Nope, wait. No. Leighton misses the dude. <laughs> um. Let's see. Do you really need this? Yes, you do. What about a hat rack? Well, I mean, there's... I don't ever take my hat off. He says it's superb now. Oh, he needs a tree. Um... Well, just look for... Oh, no. L look for things that you can take off of Leighton and he doesn't care. Rugs. What will the professor put on his floor then? Nah, I know. Brilliant! It's a bunk bed! <laughs> That's your answer? <laughs> wait, wait, no, I have to see. <laughs> One bed's enough for this tired scholar. Um, the chair would make sense with the TV. True, but that kind of bums Leighton out, so maybe we give him this chair. Nope. Maybe we give Leighton a TV just for the hell of it. Um, painting? Oh no. Classy man needs a classy painting. Clock? Map. Oh, there we go. Now this is a room any gentleman would be proud to call his own. Staying here should speed up the investigation. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses and you should have a new challenge for me. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. Luke, my boy, I'm scared. <laughs> I keep getting mind controlled and saying bizarre things I have no idea what I'm talking about. 
I assure you, I don't know what I'm talk talking about, my boy, but it keeps happening. Oh, wait, I actually do have to turn off the power. Alright. Wait, uh, wait. Oh, you saved? I just saved. Okay. Let me check again just to make sure I really saved. Yep, that sure looks like a save. What's that? Staying here now that we're nearly done with our investigation should speed up our investigation. You will recall that we actually ran uh, away from the solution to the mystery um, to uh, rearrange our house. Or yeah, dem demonstrably that's untrue. It in fact slowed down the investigation considerably. Alright, let's just run through these. Missing number. Do give this puzzle a go. The numbers below all follow a certain rule. What is the missing number? Hmm. One, two, three, eleven. Hmm. Get which room is used as the background for the Robo Dog puzzles. Yeah, I don't remember myself. Is this going to be something like 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2, minus 2 is 1, uh, plus 1 is 2, no, that doesn't make any sense. This ain't no Fibonacci sequence. I was only lurking in the shadows for a while. Did I miss any hot lore drops? Not really, Not actually. Really. We've been uh, basically just charging through the last uh, few puzzles before we get into the, the cool stuff. Uh -huh. Let's see. Maybe it's zero. I have no idea. <laughs> I see 11, 12, 13. I think the missing number is 193492. Yeah, okay. Just slot that one in there. Ah. Uh. The numbers below all follow a certain rule. What do we define as the distinct numbers? One plus two is three. One plus two plus three is... Six. Which doesn't really make sense. One plus two is three. One plus one is two. One plus two is not one, but two plus one is three. So, if you think about it, it really does make sense. Makes you think. <laughs> think about it, won't you? Talk um, to your kids about Fibonacci sequences. <laughs> this ain't Fibonacci. <laughs> nah, um... Da, 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 da. All right, three minus one is two. Two minus one is one. One minus one is not one, but one equals one. So there. 
Is it like a clock? One plus thirteen equals two plus and then I don't know how you get thirteen. Maybe it's a date. So, like, it's uh, New Year's Eve in 1912 at, um... It's not a palindrome. Nah. You can't flip it turn-wise. Eh, let's get a hint. Meh! As mentioned before, the numbers are lined up according to some rule or idea. Continuing the string out to the left, the first num the number that would go in front of the first number is zero. The number that comes after the final three is one. Comes after the final three, so two, one, three results in one. Uh, zero, one, two, three, one, one. One, two, three, one, three, one. Hmm. Zero, one, two, three, one, one, Hannah, one, two, one, three, one. Again, zero feels right to me, but I can't really explain why. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you're to break up the first, the string of numbers, the first group is one, two, three, one. Does this group make you think of anything? Anything at all? So, December 31st. Yes. And then 1-1, one 1-2, dash one, one dash 1-3. One dash so it's 1, I guess. I, December 31st, January 1st, January 2nd, oh. January. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, and that holds because then you would have December 30th, what? which would put a zero yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, And then you'd have one four. Yeah. Okay. Or well, whatever. <laughs> Meh. First try. Yes. Very good. The string of numbers represents the dates from the end of one year to the beginning of the next. Yay. Good work. You have the makings of a puzzle master yourself, Luke. Roll the dice. Do give this puzzle your best try. All right, come on, come on, come on. A young boy sits quietly on a stoop, rolling a single die over and over. Each time the die stops rolling, he picks it up, examines it, and whispers something to himself. Ominous. Uh, each time he rolls a one, he whispers, 15. Each time he gets a six, he whispers, 20. The boy has just rolled a three. What number will he whisper uh, this time? Uh, my gut tells me uh, 17, but I'm sure... That is a short sighted. T 
<laughs> Thank you for tuning in to tonight's session of uh, Designing for Featuring Counting. One, fifteen, six, twenty, three, question mark. Who knows? <laughs> um. Oh, come on. What's the through line here? Well, so why would one be 15 and six be yeah. 20? Um. This isn't some uh, weird situation where, like, it divvies up and all nice and clean, is it? Because, like, this, again, 17 feels too easy. Yeah, it doesn't... I don't see a reason why you would add 14 to everything. Yeah. Unless, like, this kid is 14 and then he adds that... <laughs> number to it or something stupid like that uh nah I think I'm at the point where I can just hemorrhage hint coins a key phrase that you should keep in mind as you solve this puzzle is sum total. Okay, so, um... 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15. Um... To get to 20, you would have, uh... Five factorial, or is that one times two times three times four times five? Um. Oh no, that's a sum. Uh, the sum of one plus two plus three plus four plus five it gets you to fifteen. Yeah. Twenty. Um. Twenty doesn't really work in that sequence because if you were to add six, that would get you to twenty-one. Oh, it's, is it adding together the other five sides? No. Huh. No, because... Okay, factorials are products, okay. Well, that's interesting, though. Um, you can get to 20 if you exclude... I got it. It is the sum less the face on the opposite side. So in one's case, six is opposite one. So adding one plus two plus three plus four plus five gets you to 15. In six's case, one is opposite of six. So adding two plus three plus four plus five plus six gets you to 20. In that case, four is opposite of three. So one plus two plus three plus five plus six. Um, well, that... Oh, for God's sakes, that is 17. Is it really? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> one, one, two, three is six. Uh, five and six is 11, so that gets you to 17. <laughs> Meh. Well, at least we know why. I think I've got it. Dumb. Yes. At least we feel better than if we had just put in 17 and saw, oh, good, you were smart because you figured this thing out. And then we'd have to go, oh, we didn't figure that thing out. And the boy is counting the number of dots currently visible on the die. The only face of the die not included in this count is the one that faces down. 
The top and bottom sides of a die always add up to 7, so it's easy to calculate the total for 5 faces exposed on any given roll. Alright. Okay. Excellent work, my boy. I definitely see Beatrice is uh, looking like Brick Road. Oh, that's unfortunate. Give it a go, Luke. Let's do it! Red versus Blue, Season 2. Two sets of colored balls, level of uh, move the foos, do, do. Okay. <coughs> Within each zone, all balls must stay in the correct ABCD order in order for you to complete the puzzle. Balls can only move into vacant spots and they can't jump over other balls, so don't even think about using uh, so, autofire. So the main thing is we need to switch the two A's, and once we do that, the rest can be moved around pretty easily. That makes sense. I've already bungled this. Nope. No, that could be right. Well, but then how do I exit strategy from here? Move the C, and then... Oh. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, just focus on getting the A over there. Okay. Okay. So that's a start. Now move A. Oh, pff. yeah, okay. Now move D. Now move A. Now move C. Move D. C. No. Oh, well, that works too. <clears throat> and actually, that works out nicely because B's are probably what I'd want to switch next, anywho. Yep. Yeah, move red B. Yeah. Wait, no, I've done something horribly wrong here. No, wait, no, no we're good, we're good. We're good, because I want these to match the backgrounds. Yeah, oh. move red C. <laughs> okay, so then... Uh, if I do that... That's okay. Yeah, you got it. Oh, okay. Hey, that one's not too bad. How does this sound? Yay! Saves the day. Great job! Thank you. I knew you could do it. Okay. Uh, all right. Enough of this. Enough of this. We gotta go. We gotta go. We got places to go. Things to do. Once again, the last one was easy in comparison. Yep. <laughs> Our story so far. After a long search, Luke and President Layton finally gain access to the tower. Uh, inside, they learn the truth behind the village of St. Mysterio and Raymond's abduction. Still reeling from the strange turn of events, the two climb the tower in search of the golden apple. Okay. Alright, now we just have to scramble back up the tower, back to the point of no return.
The two climbed the tower in search of the golden apple and somehow found themselves back at the marketplace. It's uh it's a friggin' Dragon Quest 2 sit situation all over again. Alright, here we go. Or or Wizardry 4. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Strangely, this option is green, which means go, but in this case it means don't go. Well, I think it means, like, you did it, you cleared it all. Way to go, it's green. Okay, I mean, I guess it's the color of peace. The peace of knowing that we've done everything there is to do. Yep. Alright, let's go. What kind of person would live in a place like this? <clears throat> Unbelievable! Just look at this room. The stuff in here has to be worth gazillions. This must be the top floor that Bruno spoke of. So we might be standing in the same room as the golden apple at this very moment? I've been waiting for you two. You're the golden apple? Oh, she's kind of a slight, uh, pretty slight, huh? <laughs> Professor, you knew about this? I had an inkling. Don't you see how genius it is, though? The Baron didn't write the will to find a successor to his fortune. His true aim was to find a worthy guardian for his daughter. And he was willing to put his whole fortune on the line to do so, in spite of that being highly illegal. <laughs> it could have meant that she would have never found a, a guardian, but I suppose that's just the risks we take. Well, I mean, she was safe up here in this rickety tower, surrounded by uh, droid bots. Having to cook for herself. Having yep. to get food for herself. I presumably Bruno is just constantly running up and down the tower. I guess so. Yes. My name is Flora. I've been waiting here in the tower for so long. Were you locked up in here the whole time? Oh no, but before Papa passed, he told me I should wait here until someone from outside St. Mysterie came for me. Luckily, I think it's only been uh, like a week or two at most since um, the Baron died. True. So like, it, not as much of a nightmare situation, but... Papa said that whoever came for me would be someone I could trust with my life. Well, that's not fair either, because they could be good at solving puzzles and horrible people, but... Oh. <laughs> yeah, like Don <laughs> Paolo... Wait, no, no. <laughs> so that's why you kept watching us move about town. What was that?! Hmm? Oh. Ah. oh, hey! Speaking of... Come out. 
So basically, Don Powell is just doing this to be spiteful. Yep. <laughs> Follow me. We must evacuate this tower immediately. What now? <laughs> Got it! Got it! I think Don Paolo and Dr. Wily would get along pretty well. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> what are we going to do? I've got it. Uh, there's no last minute uh, having to come up with the puzzle. <laughs> just wait a moment, Flora. Imagine if Don Paolo just straight up showed up <laughs> in a Wily machine. <laughs> Is he good of a guy for a flying machine? <clears throat> yes, he yes! is. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Action Layton. <laughs> yeah. He's he's legit uh very competent in an action scene. Goodness, you're all right, Professor. So, is that a birthmark or? Don Palo's flying contraption was something else. I really thought we were done for back there. Yes, it was all quite dodgy, but he also provided us with the answer to one of our ongoing mysteries. <laughs> yeah, he just left Luke in the curling tower. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's fine. He can he can make it. He's a big boy. <laughs> Do you remember that awful noise we heard when the first time we visited Reinhold Manor? The one that spooked Claudia? Oh, that so that must have been that noise. You've put it together. The racket was likely Don Paolo's contraption making a crash landing. I like that they just as the I like that they just assume that Don Paolo can't land a plane for yeah. beans. If that's the case, then we now know the approximate time of Don Paolo's entrance into Saint Mystere. And from this coffee stain, I can deduce that he was here at precisely six thirty in the morning. <laughs> mm. Wait, that's me. Ah, uh, that makes perfect sense. It figures then that Franco wouldn't have noticed Don Paolo's entrance. So Flora is the golden apple that everyone's been looking for. That means the treasure that Lady Dahlia and the others were chasing never existed in the first place. 
No, I'm fairly certain they weren't mistaken. I do believe a fortune is hidden somewhere within this town. But the Baron would need to hide it somewhere only the Golden Apple would know to look. You mean that Flora knows where the treasure is hidden? I'm sorry, but I don't know about a treasure or anything like that. Let's head back to Reinhold Manor one more time. I suspect we'll clear everything up there. We've almost done it. Professor, do you really think the treasure could be located here? Oh, sorry. Look closely at this painting, Luke. I'm sure it holds the key to the Reinhold fortune. <coughs> but I've already looked at it. If we solve this mystery, Luke, I'm certain we'll come face to face with the Reinhold treasure. Touch the painting where the golden apple is hidden. Well, that would be where uh, it appeared on... Um... Where the birthmark appeared, so here-ish. <laughs> Maybe the painting is just really valuable. <laughs> <laughs> I rem remember I now. It's thing. right here. Boop. Aha! A hidden switch. <laughs> the switch seems to have activated the wall. And to think that Reinhold Manor held the secret behind this painting all along. It looks like there's a passage that leads farther in. Oh. Let's see where this passage goes. Oh no, you've uncovered Team Rocket's secret hideout beneath Reinhold Manor. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe oh this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Go ahead. Can't believe the staircase to nowhere was this very was the secret passage all along. Very not suspicious. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at this place. I had no idea. Now, how in the world did you know that the switch was hidden in the painting? Listen closely, Luke. It wasn't that difficult, really. <laughs> it was kind of an obvious hint. <laughs> Wisdom wasn't the only thing Baron Reinhold required of potential guardians for his only daughter. You saw it too, did you not? That peculiar mark on her neck that only appeared once she laughed? Oh, it laughed, I see. Oh. In other words, Baron Reinhold has bizarre science capabilities that no one in the real world would be capable of. <laughs> but also, he set out one last requirement for the potential inheritor to his fortune. To be really funny. He wanted someone who could make Flora smile again after losing those dear to her. Actually, that's it's like really a Monsters, Inc., my boy. To that person and that person only would Baron Reinhold reveal the location of his actual fortune. So what you're saying is this isn't Boo's door? <laughs> That's unbelievable, Professor, but it all makes sense now. I suppose this Flora. Or I think I'll go ahead and do this one. Yeah. Flora, my little Flora. Where's that voice coming from? Flora, you've made it here at last. That voice! Papa, is that you? Papa! My dear Flora, has the village watched over you as I would have? I built Saint Mystere for you so that you would never have to know true loneliness. Well, to be fair, Bruno did the actual building, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess... Papa, I... Pa Papa, I don't think this is really an appropriate thing for you to put in your dying message, but whatever. <laughs> Credit to Bruno for the actual building. Special thanks to me for the idea. 
every time I replay this message, I have to have weird thoughts whenever that part of it comes. <laughs> In any case, uh, if you've come this far, I suppose it's safe to assume my plan was a success. My greatest regret is that I'm not there to see you become a young woman. But please know that I want nothing more than for you to be happy. Whether the person by your side right now can give you that or not is up to you, I suppose. And to you who have found your way to my daughter's side, you have my heartiest congratulations. If you could make it through the barrage of puzzles I set before you. I imagine a person of your abilities has already caught on, but allow me to reveal Saint Mystere's secret. The secret of Saint Mystere? Recently, I was told by my physician that I don't have much time left on this earth. I can come to terms with dying, but the thought of leaving my only child alone in the world torments me. This is why I've commissioned Bruno to construct Saint Mystere. At least this way, she'll be safe and protected until she's old enough to venture to the outside world. Oh, it's, it's kind of a jolly dumpy fellow. <laughs> Streets and buildings are the bones of a village, but its heart is the people who live in it. This is why I asked Bruno to create all the villagers here, as well as all the puzzles hidden within them. I've asked Matthew to make news of my death public only once Flora has grown past childhood. Oh, so it has been a while. Yep. So stranger, how does my beautiful little flower look now? I imagine she's blossoming into adulthood. Equally important to me is finding someone to whom I can entrust both my daughter and my fortune. This is why the inhabitants of St. Mister are constantly testing the knowledge of the visitor. If you've made it this far, it must mean that you possess both wisdom and dedication to my daughter. <laughs> Bruno King Polly is anger chip. <laughs> oh. This is all uh, this is all quite um tragic, sir, but what what if I don't consent to adopting a child? These are the kinds of things that you should talk with us beforehand, you realize. No, no, the terms are all very clearly <laughs> laid out in the terms of service. The rules and conditions were, were mailed to you. Anyway, I'm confident that you'll take good care of my fortune and flora. This is why everything in this room, the whole of my fortune, belongs to you now. When you remove it from here, Saint Mysterio will complete the objective for which it was created. I imagine the inhabitants will fall into a deep sleep from which they are never to awaken. Now wait just a minute. Is he saying <laughs> that if if we <laughs> And then it'll blow up <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a Golden Land reference earlier, but I suppose that's doubly uh, uh, relevant now. Yeah. Now wait just a minute. Is he saying that if we take the treasure, all of Saint Mysterio will just disappear? <laughs> Goes right to your thighs first. And then <laughs> you'll blow up. I honestly don't know the answer to that question, Luke. But it's possible that Saint Mysterio is designed to shut down the instant we lay a hand on the treasure. Well, that just seems rather unnecessary. So if that happens, everyone will just... stop? Just like puppets with their strings cut. <sighs> I leave it to you, brave traveler. Draw the curtain on Saint Mystere, and lay this lifeless village to rest. Above all else, take care of my precious daughter. She's in your hands now. I'm sorry I had to put this moral quandary on you, even though these are <laughs> robots that possess quite a, um, quite a severe amount of intelligence. They're literally indistinguishable from human beings, but, you know, I I'm going to have to stick you with a trolley problem at the last minute. I present you with one final riddle. The <laughs> riddle of your conscience. 
<laughs> this is the final puzzle. Will you sacrifice the robot people for gold? Oh, Papa. I can't believe it. If we even touch this treasure, all of St. Mysteer will just grind to a halt. Flora, by right, this inheritance belongs to you. You should be the one to decide what's done with it. I, I don't want it. But why ever not, my dear? The people who live here have been with me so long. Curious as this village is, it's watched me grow up. Title drop! Yep. <laughs> <coughs> I want St. Mysterium, my village, to just stay as it is. Forever. Even though this gold could just save millions of lives. No, no. It's, uh... It's, it's pyrite, anyway. <laughs> I see. Then so it shall be. But what of you, Flora? Will you stay here with your village? I... I... S solved Are you sure this is quite all right, madam? I guess Matthew's uh an actual person uh flesh and blood person too. No, he could still be a robot. <laughs> oh. And certainly. If leaving will make Flora happy, I'd like nothing more than to see her off with a smile. And so millions of people died due to the thousands of pounds of gold that we could have used to save their lives. I'm telling you, it's all like rocks painted gold or something. <laughs> it it's secretly a test of character. What an astonishing village that was, Professor Layton. Does this mean you'll be gracing the front page of the London Times again sometime soon? No, Luke. St. Mustel's secret must stay between us. Huh? Why do you say that? You'll see, my dear boy. We don't want people to make a spectacle of Flora. That wouldn't be right. Of course. Always thinking of others. <laughs> well, one must always put a lady's needs first. That's what a gentleman does. Aww. <laughs> Tips Fedora. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't cheapen this <laughs> character moment. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> None of that, Mr. Bocce. <laughs> anyway, that's game. Um, so Flora becomes a main cast member in every subsequent game. Oh, yay, um, nice. Of, yeah, yeah. Shoutouts to Akira Tago, the puzzle master, who designed most of these puzzles, in some cases upwards of uh, 50 years prior to the release of this game. <laughs> Are the cats and mouse robots too? Are those cows robots too? <laughs> I was going to say, I think I remember knowing there was a girl in some of the Lantern games alongside Luke, and then it all made sense to me. Yeah, that's where she comes from is the end of this game. Oh, that's really sweet, though. I, I like it when, um... I always like it when, um... The first adventure, or an early adventure, introduces, uh... 
uh, of a mystery series introduces uh, uh, a character relevant to that plot that then becomes a mainstay. Yeah. I don't know, I, this is a weird comparison, but it's like uh, getting a party member in a JRPG. Like, they're only immediately relevant for uh, whatever the village is, but then they're just along for the ride. And it's always fun. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, yeah, that, that game's charming and cute, and the plot gets a little silly, but I, I think it's not as bad as the series would get later on. Not enough to ruin it for me, and I think that it's... Um, I think that it still generally has a decent theme and like uh, the importance of family and all that. Yeah, definitely. How bad does it get? Uh, not getting into specifics, but uh, if we ever do seek, if we ever do um, diabolical box, which we might do, this I think this for, this really worked for our streams. Um, <coughs> maybe not right away. Per but. Professor Layton X Ace Attorney is a trip. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the second game uh, is really out there. Yeah, that one too. And if it's, if the reveal being everyone was all robots isn't out there enough for you, that just tells you, that gives you an example of how much ass pulling they do as the series goes on. Yeah, let's just say all the villagers are actually robots, as the big plot twist is actually relatively tame as far as the series goes. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, he's still there. That was the hardest character in the world to come up with an accent for because the whole point is that he can't decide where which country he was from. <laughs> well, I mean, nah, I got nothing. Oh, is Stash and Scarfin? No, Stash and Scarfin's a robot. Yep, everyone is except for Flora. Leighton, um, Bruno, Bruno, Luke, and her dad, but he's dead. Well, also, uh, and Don Paolo, but also uh, the yeah. two people we ran into in the tower, uh, Card Lady with Lisp and uh, the Lost Explorer. Oh, right. Yep. To be continued. Martha's probably a robot. She's just rezzed into the town and is, she's just confused. Fair enough. Though you've reached the story's end, Professor Layton and the Curious Village is far from over. How many puzzles did you solve over the course of your adventure? Precisely. Well, I don't know. I don't know about far. It's far from over, but. <laughs> yeah. Precisely 120 puzzles are hidden throughout the town, so why not try to complete every puzzle? Also be sure to check the bonus section, fulfill certain conditions to unlock more bonus content. Your game will save now. You have no choice in the matter. <laughs> oh, we're now a golden Layton. Okay, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, and then we can do those last six puzzles. I think we can blitz through them in an hour? I don't want to take too much time doing these. Probably. Alright. I might actually get started on them just while you're yeah. up, just for the sake of it. But Yeah, okay. Let's see. 
It did in fact unlock the Golden Apple's house, but what is top secret? Oh! What is the hidden door? Oh, to check those completed mysteries. Uh, okay. I think they're still updating the weekly puzzles. Ooh, probably not. Yeah, we can go ahead and really quick do the mysteries. Uh, yes to sec. Our story so far. We solved it. We solved it. We solved it. Will the daring pair finally find the treasure they seek at the top of the tower? Yes, they did. Oh, wait. No, I don't have a gooms. Uh, mysteries. Run through these. The Golden Apple turned out to be Flora, the daughter of Baron Reinhold. The name and legend surrounding the Golden Apple were created by the Baron to help him find a suitable guardian for his daughter. Uh, the noise that shook the mansion and scared off Claudia was caused by Don Paolo's flying machine making an emergency crash landing in St. Mysteer. The rest of these we've seen. Uh, crank, Bruno stole the crank to trap us. The small miniature cogs were a tip that they were robots. Uh, Lady Dahlia's robot. Dudes going missing were uh, Bruno fixing the robots. The crumbling tower was not crumbling. The rumbling tower was um, where the robots were fixed. Raymon was a robot who got fixed. Shelmi was Don Paolo, and Key was hidden in a place. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Gums, you back? Oh, he's not back. Oh, they're all happy to be in the inn now. I didn't notice that before. You see the painting? I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, <clears throat> we decide... Did we ever decide who the painting was of? That's gonna be the... That's Lady Dahlia, the real one. Okay, that's what I thought. Alright, real quick, do you want to just go through these uh, sure. entries? After a seemingly endless climb and several trying puzzles, we've at long last reached the top floor. Awaiting our arrival there was Flora, the golden, the Baron's daughter, and the true golden apple. It seems that according to her father's wishes, she has been living quietly in this tower and waiting for Luke and me to reach the top. And? Oh, I didn't know only the robot was named Dahlia. Okay. <clears throat> With the secrets of St. Mysteer finally brought to light, I think Luke has begun to doubt whether there really was a fortune to be found in the first place. But I'm still, but I still believe in its existence. And unless I'm mistaken, the Baron has hidden it somewhere right under our noses. All right, and that's everything in the campaign. So now, da, 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 blitzing through this. Alright, so Top Secret we'll ignore for now because that requires Pickerots, and let's quick grind out the last Pickerots. The Golden Apple's House. Ah! Well, we'll get there in a sec. Too Many Queens 5. Do give this puzzle a try. Ninety-nine, wow. In chess, the queen can move all the hell over the place. So. Here we are. This is the big one. So yep. You can place eight queens on this 8x8 chessboard. The rules are the same as before. Don't let any piece block another line of movement. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gooms, do you have a fan on or something? Oh, sorry. Is it better now? Yeah, it's fine. 
Yeah, it, it was pretty hot, so I turned on a fan. Sure, no biggie. Man, I wish I remembered um, if we had uh, how they were placed in uh, uh, Too Many Queens 4, we could just totally cheese this. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, right there. That one's no bueno. I don't think that works. Why not? Yeah, th those two. Uh, oh yeah. Are in there. Um. Well, wait. Swap. Swap the second row and the third row. Let's see, that's no oh, but... good because these two, uh, and these two. Okay. So move the top one down one. Move that one up one. These, move these no yeah. match. So move that one down one. And it's up. Oh, these two. Oh, uh, those two. Um so can you move that one down one and then the one on the right up one? So move this down. No, oh, not that not that one. Not that one. This down? That one. Yeah. These two are now uh Okay, so move that one down one. This not that one. Not that one. This one? Yeah. And this and one. up one. Let's see. That might be clear. That looks clear to me. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright. That's that. Easy. Here's my guess. I did it! Yes! Those are fun. I like those. Way to go! You finally worked your way up to an official sized chessboard, 8x8. Because this classic puzzle requires the solver to place 8 queens, it's known as the 8 queens puzzle. If you consider rotations and mirrored solutions as separate answers, there are 92 answers to this puzzle. Without any of the above factors, there are only 12 answers. Interesting. Terrific. Keep up the good work. I kind of like that these last few puzzles are like classic puzzles that are like teaching you a little bit of culture in a way. Yeah, and that we've just been building our way up to it over the course of the full game. Yeah. Heavier or lighter is next. Go on, give it a try. Below are 12 weights that are visually identical to one another. Among these is a single weight that has a different weight from the others. The problem is that you don't know uh, uh, whether this weight is heavier or lighter than the others. Use the scales exactly three times to determine which weight is different from the others. Okay, so if we... so. When we did this before, um, when we did this before, the trick was that we didn't do fully half of the sets, only part of the sets. So, like, I think we should do five on each side. Four, five. Can you do one, two, three, four, five on one side, and then just so it's easier to keep track of? Sure. Okay. If we do so, it, yeah, go ahead. So, like, if we do it this way, if they're exactly the same, then cool. Uh, it's going to be eleven or twelve. If yeah. one of them is different, we can subdivide from there. Yeah. So, way based on that, comes that you don't know whether this weight is heavier or lighter than the others. Hmm. 
Okay, so we now have a bit of a trick here. Um, we have to choose one set versus the other to uh, play with. Oh, I didn't see that part of it. Hmm. I think we might actually need to stack up uh, all uh, all of them in this case. Sorry, SG, I'll turn it off. I think we actually do need to stack up uh, uh, all uh, um, words. Yeah, yeah, okay, hold on. We're gonna have to, we'll start this over. Because we actually do need to put all uh, 12 on the scales to begin with. <laughs> so with this, we probably want to pick, uh, let's go ahead and pick on the heavier ones. This I don't think this is right. I don't think so either, but I'm committed. Nope. <clears throat> I, um... I think I've, uh, figured out a way to cheese this puzzle. Yeah, but don't cheese it. Yeah, okay. Um, I wonder if it changes which one uh, the different one is every time you restart. And that'd be smart. Okay. Oh, I got it. We want to do four on, on each side. So, this will then tell us that, uh, so that... Oh, and th then we compare it to 9, 10, 11, 12. And if they're equal, then... Er. Oh, I hadn't actually thought of it like that. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. See, I was just going to go... Meh. Well, that and doesn't tell us anything. Then that's true. So... Do that. Ah, it does uh, switch it uh, switch up weights each time you hit restart. Smart. Okay, so now that we know that these are the same, we know that these are dumb and smelly, and that we don't want anything to do with them. So now we move on to nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. But the issue is we don't know what to do. You're right. I should have done 9, 10, then... Wait, no. Because, like, even if I do it like this... Well, I know that now uh, one of these two is the dastard, but I have no idea if it's nine or ten. Yeah. It's tricky, tricky. Okay. 
What is a trick we can do to determine in three moves whether the guy is light or not? What if we did fives again? If we did fives again, that does leave us with two left over. Okay, so now we know that uh, one of these sides is... Um, we know it's not 11 or 12, that's all we know. Right, so theoretically, if we shuffled in 11 and 12 on one of those sides, that would... Um, Give us a 1 in 12 chance of figuring out the answer. Hmm. Or 2 and 12 chance. Right. Okay. This probably wouldn't give us anything. So that's the same. Um... Switch those two. And we've gained, no we've learned nothing from the experience. No. Okay. Uh, hmm. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What if we did fours again? What does fours give us? No. Man, imagine if there was some kind of ultimate latent mode where every puzzle had a time limit. Uh, that would give me a heart attack. <coughs> <laughs> the trick to this puzzle is hacking the game to give you 12 tries of checking the weights. I, I think there are... No, before you do that, I think that it's something to do with, like, weighing something twice. Right. But we need to first determine what needs to be weighed twice. You can figure out which one it is if you do... One through four, and then five through eight, and then pick one of them, and then weigh it against nine through twelve. But you still want to figure out which of those four it would be. <laughs> one and two against each other three times in a row. Okay, so then... Okay, so we know it's 5 through 8, but I don't see how you could figure that out in one move. Yeah, that doesn't tell us anything. Right. I think it has to be a five. <laughs> okay. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Maybe get rid of 6 and 7 and put an 11 and 12 on there. Well, these are going to be the same weight. Oh, right. You're right. So maybe... Uh, so I think it's going to... Swap 6 and 7 with 1 and 2 or something? Because we need to figure out... Yes. Oh. Yeah, we need to figure out which one changes it when it moves. So that would mean it's one, two, six, or seven. Come on, let me that that kind of puts us in the same situation. Okay, it's not... So it would have to be 3, 4, or 5, because nothing else changed. Or, no, 3, 4, 5, or 8, 9, 10. So to test this out... Oh, that doesn't tell us anything. Tells us that 4 is fat. Nah, there's room for error. Okay. You can't you can't ever end up with one versus one because that will never give you an answer. Not necessarily. If you've got it down to a one choice among three, then that would provide the answer. But let's. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm gonna take a hint. There's no one definitive way to solve this puzzle, but it's best to start by putting four weights on each side of the scale. If the scale tips one direction. Uh, you know that the four weights off the scale don't contain the weight you're looking for. If this weight stays level, you know that one of the four weights you didn't load on the scale is uh, the, excuse me, irregular weight. <laughs> if only we could do what every mid-2000s uh, cartoon did and have an episode where we digitize it ourselves and enter the virtual reality and can physically feel out the different weights. Sure, yeah. Okay. okay, so we know it's not 9 through 12 now. Right. Oh, maybe do... Maybe replace 2 with this and s like we did before. And s we did that last time with 5. Let's, maybe it works better with 4. Let's do evens and odds. Okay. Okay, and now what does that tell us? It means that moving the... It means that it can't be any of the ones we moved. Because it didn't change anything. Clever. So we now take off those two. As well as those two. And what? So that would give us the same results. So if we swap three and six. That would at best be a 50-50. Okay, what if we get these guys on there. We know for a fact it's not those. Correct. So this is a way of determining if eight is uh, weighs weirdly or if six weighs weirdly. And indeed it is either eight or six. I have to logic this out. Um, so... I think we messed up on the second step. 
Okay. I want to say there's going to be some shenanigans with using the ones you didn't weigh as uh, as filler weights. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. So we know it's not 9 through 12. Um... If we again shuffle these around a little bit, do we gain anything from adding those guys? No, that would be exactly the same. Right. Okay. Okay. Here's a thought. What if we just straight up removed 8 and 7 for now? Then we can base behavior on... Try splitting the search space in half on the second step. Okay, um... Restart it. Okay. Well, I mean, we're on the second step. I know, but restart it anyway, just okay. so we can... You move things around a lot. Okay. Okay, so can we divide this into thirds? Uh... Kind of. Like, I'm wondering if we could do what we did in the first step again. So, like, if we did it like this, see how these reacted? Um, no, that would give us a 50-50 at best. Weigh two pairs of the weights in the set you know are afflicted. Actually, there's a thought. So we do that. Two, three. What are you doing? Four. So if these two match, then we know the we know the jerk's gonna be down there. Um, Which is another fifty-fifty. It's true. Not what you meant. Okay. I'm gonna take another hand. Two weights on each side. Alright, that's what I had done before. I mean, that, at best, that would leave us with four. Did we try this? I suppose we didn't try this. So no change there. Yeah, so we're left with these four. We know it's one of those. But we can't get from four to one. And that would get us to two. We know it's one of those ones you moved, but... Alright. Let's take another hint. 
If the scale tips after you weigh eight weights in the fashion described in the first hint, take one set of weights off the scale and keep the other four where they are. Next, put the four unweighed weights on the empty side of the scale. If you made it this far, all you need to do is narrow the possible choices down one more time in the next step. Seems like you were onto something in that first go around. Foozle, floozle, bluzle, blue. Okay, so now we're like, hmm. Banish you to the Shadow Realm. Get you guys on there. Okay, so now we know that the weight is lighter than the others. We have established that. Also, uh -huh. it's in one through four. Oh yeah, this time we know that it's lighter, which gives us more information than before. Indeed. So now, how do we... Okay, so... What's the trick here, then? Here's a thought. So what we could do is we could take, uh, just setting this to where it was before. We know one through four are lighter. One of these is lighter. Yeah. If we take off, say, four, then fill this up, fill this up with three weights that we know are the correct weight, and then mix mix two of these around then if these scales go the same uh, weigh the same four is our culprit if um, this side goes up two is the culprit I don't quite have a way of determining what which of one or three is the culprit okay but that at least narrows things down a bit I think that's another 50-50, but all right. I'm trying to think if there's another trick we can pull here. Rats. Because then it would be one of one or three. Yeah. So... Okay, restart. I really don't want to take that last hint if I don't gotta. Okay. Okay. One, same as before, one through four. Same as before, one through four. <laughs> Maybe on the second step you have to take off, like, take off one. See if that changes anything. Hmm. I'm just looking. Uh, keep... No, it does specify you have to stay with four. So. All right. I think I had generally the right idea, but mayhaps there's a better way I can execute it here. So, what would be a way to ensure Maybe instead of putting 9 through 12 on there, you put 
9, 10, and 5, and 6 or something. In For... step 2. No, the hint spe specifies that you have to put the uh, four unweighed weights on. Uh, uh, on oh, there. yeah. Okay. Uh, which means that maybe we shouldn't keep one through four on there. Hmm? For this last step? No, for step two. It's sort of, it's moot which way around it goes. Uh, the way, if the scale tips, uh, after you weigh the first eight weights in the fashion described, uh, take one set of weights off the scale and keep the other four where they are. Next, put the four unweighed weights on the empty side of the scale. So, it doesn't, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Just narrow down the possible, possible choices down one more time in the next step. So here's a thought. Um, so here's a thought. Um, so one, two, three, or four are light. If yes. the scale stands at this position, one is the light weight. No. Let me try this again. If, uh... Yeah, okay. If this side... Uh, the idea I was going for was due to the disparity of weight. If one side goes up, or it's doofy, but that don't work. I don't think you can really do uneven amounts like that. Hmm. Okay. Just give us the last tent. I don't know. Yeah, alright. If your scale doesn't tip after your second weighing, as described in the earlier hint, you know the odd weight is somewhere within the four weights uh, you took off the scale. If the scale tips in the same direction as before, you know that the irregular weight is somewhere within the four weights that you kept on the scale. If it tips in the opposite direction than before, the weight you seek is one of the four you loaded uh, on the scale before the second weighing. So that, that actually doesn't give us anything. Poop. Poop, 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 poop. nothing. Well, it's three. I kind of just lucked out on that one. Okay, fine. Let's see what the answer was. Yay! That's correct. This challenging problem is well known to many puzzle aficionados. If you're lucky, it's possible to find the answer without too much work. Think of how you could do this if you could use the scale as many times as you wanted. It never really gave us the answer. Oh well. Or the solution. 
Nicely done. I know you couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, I couldn't, could we? Okay. Um, Princess in the Box 2 seems hard. We might need to finish these last four next time. Unfortunately, it's pretty late. That's true. But do you think we start next session with this and then... Princess in the Box 2 is probably the hardest puzzle in the game, I think. Yeah, okay. Alright, fair enough. Yeah. I guess I started like this, so we'll just do that. Just save it. I suppose we can I, I, I kind of wanted to finish it tonight, but we're going to have to have one more session, I guess. Yes. Okay, well, that's all right. To get these last four ultimate mega hard puzzles. Yeah, okay, all right. These last puzzles are doozy. Alright, fair enough. I, I, I expect the last three will be really hard, too. We'll, uh, we'll have to do our best then next time. Yep. Well, hey, uh, all the same, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we got to the end of the story. Uh, please be sure to tune in next time for the end of the uh, puzzlery. Puzzle? Yes. Is that the word? I don't know. Revelry and pu puzzles. Puzzlery. There we go. Yeah, alrighty. Alright. Until next time. Until next time.